Uh, you really could pan, the, pan your camera uh, left there. Well, we're live anyway. Okay. Lord, we thank you for loving us, for dying to set us free. We thank you that you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lead us, guide us, fill us with your spirit. In Christ's name, amen. Amen. So, the, the Romans is a wonderful letter. It is theologically all there. It is personally there. It is nationally there in terms of the Jews and the Jewish nations. But this part of Romans is practical. How, how then shall we live? How, how, how does life work for us? How do, we, how do we be transformed in his image? So we're going to spend some time this morning in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. And we're going to start off in New Living. All right, New Living for, for Openers, Romans 12, 1. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Okay. So, brothers and sisters, so that includes us, why does Paul need to plead with them to give their bodies to God? 2,000 years ago in this church in Rome, why does Paul have to plead with them? Um, yeah, plead. I mean, you look at different versions, you see the word plead, you see the word urge. Um, beg, but yes. The, uh, I'm sorry? Beg. B-E-G is in yeah, there some, yeah. some places, too. Okay. Yeah. But, but I mean, why? It's a, it, it, the, uh, yeah, the whole, uh, it, it, well, it, the whole lot of implications. Uh, there you go. Uh, it, it, uh, like Christianity is not a static um, faith. Right. It is to be lived out, and you got to be in motion, and giving your bodies to God because he has, all for all he has done to you. Um, it's, it's a whole bunch of things. I mean, he gave his body for you. Yes. It's reasonable. It make, what makes it reasonable is that you gave you give yours back to him. There you go. Uh, for his purposes. Uh, let them be a living and holy sacrifice. This statement is, is really, really stunning because uh, this is so contrary to the temple sacrificial system right. which was a matter of taking life from animals here we're talking about a living sacrifice it's almost like an oxymoron to a jewish year because uh you know uh, the whole idea behind sacrifice was to give up a life uh, uh the life of uh, uh, a sacrificial animal and here you're giving your life uh living you're living out your life <clears throat> as a sacrifice uh, holy, living and holy, uh, living out your life in a, a holy manner, uh, a, a sanctified manner, uh, the kind he will find acceptable. Uh, not conforming to the world, but uh, conforming uh, uh, to uh, the sanctity of God. Right. So, so, brothers and sisters, he's talking to people of faith, and he's pleading with them, to give your whole body, give it all. So 2,000 years ago in the city of Rome, in the church in the city of Rome, there were people that were just going through the motions. They understood the, the, the tenets of Christian faith, but he, like, if you don't get all in, uh, please get all in, get, get committed to Christ. It's in your best interest and the kingdom's best interest. I plead with you to give your bodies to God. It seems to me that 2,000 years later, we still have 
the same issues in the church today. I That's mean, right. What I, what I think about this scripture is, is trying to live out the Christian faith mm -hmm. with everything that I have. Um, I, I've been given a car. Yeah. Amen. I give rides home. Sometimes I don't feel like it. I still do it. Yeah. Sometimes to the store because I have a license. Some people don't. Some people don't have a car. That's right. I go out and um, do some gardening. Sometimes work around the church because that's what God's given me. That's right. And so many people are gifted in so many areas and they don't use it. That's right. So giving your life in your body and everything you have that God's given you to, and I, I'm not a saint, believe me. Amen. And there's been many times because sin can be things that you don't do. Right. You know, and uh, this is a true way to worship him. That's right. You know, so. So the, the act of sacrifice was really common in, in, Jewishness and in non-Jewishness in, in the world 2,000 years ago. They understood that, that you made sacrifices for whatever God you were serving. And we, we, we don't articulate it the same way in 2024. We, we say instead, no, I'm not serving any, you know, the atheist says I'm not a sheep. I don't have a shepherd. But... But we give our whole selves, mind, soul, everything to him because of all he's done for you. Like, if I have, I have fought cancer and I have said, you know, thanks to the doctors and nurses and orderlies who helped me with it, um, but they've done for me and they, they have given to me. Yeah. And... But Christ has done so much more for me. He has paid he has paid for my sin. He has opened the doors to eternal life. He has allowed me to call him Abba, Father, Daddy, for lack of better. These are wonderful things that he has done. And when we compartmentalize God's goodness into an hour on Sunday morning, we do him huge disservice as well as uh, not giving him any service hours at all. Sometimes it's easier to kill a chicken or throw a few dollars in the plate than it is to do what God's calling us to do here and throughout the Bible, I, I, I guess. Yeah. Amen. And then we, we think about Oh, I, j I gave God three dollars, you know. Oh, wow. Well, bless God. I mean, <laughs> sometimes the widow's three dollars has huge value in the kingdom. Yeah. But if it's three dollars out of 10,000 gazillion, maybe you should rethink your priorities. Yeah. But it's not only about dollars. It's not only about tithes. But it's about time and talent and treasure. Mm. Can you be obedient to God with your time? And that doesn't mean that you don't go to work in the, in the morning or whenever your work is. That is how God has instructed you to use that time. But, you know, recovering from the cancer and stuff, I'd have the TV on for hours and hours at a time. It just kind of, sometimes it's background and sometimes watching it. And I think, oh God, what a waste of all those times. But I needed, I needed to be laying down. I just didn't need to have those shows on that, that God be God of my time. <coughs> and God be God of my talents, like Mike started to share. What talents has God given you? And, oh, I don't got any talents, Pastor. Well, that's a lie. Of course you got talents. Mm -hmm. God didn't leave you talentless. He didn't leave you... You know, oh, I'm not as good an artist as this person, little kids. I'm not as good a, but God has talented you in other ways. And you think, okay, so God, I commit my time to you. I commit my talents to you. I commit my treasures to you. They're yours, Lord. Um, forgive me, oh God, for, 
for freaking out when it doesn't look like there's enough treasures in the checking account. But you come through and you come through and you come through again in ways that give you the glory. And I give you thanks for that, oh Lord. Okay. Dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to Christ because of all that he has done for you. Good morning, Susan. Welcome with us. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he would find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Okay. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice. Like Rich started to tell us, the sacrifices of the Old Testament were primarily dead stuff. Um, there were uh, there was wave offerings and other things that were still <coughs> still living, but all he has done, let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind that he will find acceptable. Mm -hmm. So what does God find acceptable? God is spirit, and we need to worship him in spirit and in truth. Amen. Amen. So the, we elevate our <coughs> worship to a spiritual level. That's right. Uh, living... Uh, a living sacrifice um, that's uh, again it's it makes blatantly clear the difference between the, the old and the new covenants right uh, one is a matter of uh, is a covenant of death really law um, law yeah, does bring death yes. uh, and uh, the um, covenant of life and the spirit uh, is to be lived out and to live, be lived out in a uh, sanctified way. This is, I believe, what the Lord would find acceptable. Right. And then now the last phrase, this is truly the way to worship God. So it's so different than how how we're taught the ways that people worship God. Obviously, he wants us to sing praises to him. Obviously, he wants us to... But the actions of our life are worship. Some of that's a benefit to us, Pastor. Oh. I mean, I love coming and hearing and singing and... Bleh, bleh. I mean, there's nothing like that. A lot of that is, it, I feel, it's it's for me. I mean, that's a benefit. I mean, God. That's right. And, and we, we all benefit when we worship together because there's a, there's a spirit of worship that happens. Yeah. And I've told the story before, but I get to tell it again. Often I'm on the pulpit, and somebody's got their hands up and their face is all glowy and... The person next to them is digging their fingernails into the chair in front of them. Like, I'm not going to worship. And their face gets all crunched up and grouchy. I'm not going to worship. I'm not going to worship. I'm not going to do this. And the contrast is just makes me smile. Now, that doesn't mean you have to be loud in your worship. I'm not saying that. Worship is not just loud. Worship is worshipful. <coughs> but... If you choose not to worship the creator of heaven, you're going to hate heaven. Because heaven is a place where there is, there's fellowship between people, but the primary purpose in heaven is that we get a chance to worship God closer up. Yeah. Uh, so worship with our finances too, Pastor. <coughs> no, that's right. I mean, we've talked about this, not, and I don't think if we've talked about it here in the Bible study, but sure we about having a box in the back of a church. Some churches do this, where the offering is not put in, it's not passed around on Sunday. It's done like, I guess, like the widow dropping her three mites in the uh, thing. It's, it's done in that manner. And I mean, I, I love that idea because. It's a way of worship, and you don't have to be the guy who pulls out his thick wallet out. And, yeah. You know what I mean? It's just in that manner of worship, it's great. And sometimes the person in the back of the church that's just worshiping with all their heart, yeah. 
and they're not in front screaming, and it's just, it's not a show, it's a worship. That's right. God loves that. God loves that. So, so however, however it is that we give our tithes and our offerings uh, in our alms, um, you do it joyously. Amen. You do it because, you know, oh, okay. It's worship. The, the first is the first is God's, and here it is. And I've <coughs> I've told the story of taking the offering when I was just out of college, and we had an offering plate, not a basket, but a plate, like not uncommon. And people putting their checks and their coins and their whatever in it, and then some guy threw three zucchini in it. I was like, what? <laughs> And, and then it struck me, he was giving his first fruits. The first things out of his garden went on that offering plate. Now, I'm not sure how they recorded that for the IRS, but anyway, the um, humor there. But for me, it was like I just stopped in my tracks and, and, and thought about it and then just grinned. Like, thank you for honoring God. Amen. <coughs> So let's read verse 1 again in New Living, please, Rich. Uh, verse 1, New Living, NLT, Romans 12. And so, dear brothers and sisters, I plead with you to give your bodies to God because of all he has done for you. Let them be a living and holy sacrifice, the kind he will find acceptable. This is truly the way to worship him. Okay. Don't copy the behavior and customs of the world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Okay, amen. amen. So what I'm going to do now is put up on the screen five different versions. Now, I don't want you to compare versions scholarly, um, like, I like this one more than that one. I don't want you to do that with this. What I want you to do is see how <coughs> see how God speaks to you in each of these different passages, not comparing, I like this one more than that one, okay? Okay, let's try NIV, Rich. I don't have it. Mike? Um, therefore, I urge you Brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God, this is your true and proper worship. Okay, what, how does that speak to you? Um, well, As we've talked about, as a living sacrifice, and, and when you see the pleasing to 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 God, I mean, that's that's what matters. That's right. And and our bodies is it, it's when we're dead, it doesn't matter. And we go through life every day. We should do this because it's holy and pleasing to God. This is your true. Um, We've, we've talked about it a million times how we've all been given different talents and different things that uh, we I've seen people who are handicapped that can work this out. Yes. I've seen people in wheelchairs that can work this out. Amen. Uh, and they do all they can. And that's what we're called to do. All we can. And that's what's pleasing to God. And, and I love how um, how how solid these true and proper worship words are. Yeah. That this is <coughs> this is your true and proper worship. This is uh, how this amazing. Is it. <laughs> yeah. Okay, now let me take you. And everybody's is different. That's right. <coughs> Let's try it. E S V, Mike. I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Wow. 
that's 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 a little bit different there. What's it tell you? It's, How it, does it speak it, to you? It doesn't include the sisters. I noticed that right away. And well, the the new living, the new international ads, brothers and sisters. The word really is brothers, but brothers yeah. and sisters appeal to us because uh, because that's. <clears throat> so when ESV doesn't include sisters, they're not not including sisters. Right. They're just quoting what the text is. And so, by the mercies um, of God, it's not about us. It has nothing to do with us. And to present your bodies as a living, yeah. Once again, I mean, it's not a dead sacrifice. It's a it's a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable. God accepts us for for what He's given us. Yeah. And expects us to use it in an, uh, as a, an acceptable way right. every day with all you got. There you go. Rich, comments on either of these two versions? Uh, I'll tell you the truth. I've been tr just trying to come up on my screen here. So There you go. Okay. That... I haven't had a chance. How about New American it. Standard Bible, Mike? New American Standard Bible. Um, Therefore, I urge you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies a whole, a living and holy sacrifice acceptable to God, which is your spiritual service of worship. So here we have, in the first one, we have true and proper worship, which is accurate. Second one, we have spiritual worship, which is accurate. And third, we have <coughs> your spiritual service of worship, which is also lightning. And then when we get over to King James in the next column, it's your reasonable service. Yeah. And, and then let's jump to the last column, HCSB. HCSB. Oh. S B. Therefore, brothers... By the mercies of God, I urge you to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your spirit. This is your spiritual worship. Okay, so it's it's great to have this much technology because we can just <coughs> we can just throw these up and look at them. <clears throat> and not to say, oh, I like this better than that, but but yeah. this gives me a new kind of insight that I didn't have from this one. And so, yeah. <laughs> so this is, Romans 8 is the cathedral of Christian truth, but Romans 12 says this is how to live it out. Yeah. This is how practically this works. This is what's demanded of you and what God responds to. Yeah. Final thoughts, guys. I used to be really <coughs> um, anti-technology. It was just like, no, no, no. And as I've gotten into it, like the, you can watch videos on services, you can look up like this, and it really, I've come around, I've come around on technology, and this is a great way to use it. Um, Rich, final thoughts on these verse, on this verse. Yeah, well, this uh, again, this comes off the three chapters, 9, 10, and 11, that deal with Israel. Right. Mm. Uh, you know, kind of a historic context. And, and uh, um, here we are uh, shifting uh, again with the um, talking about the um, being a living sacrifice. The, the stark contrast to what was studied in the previous chapters is, is uh, very, um, very telling uh, that Paul is, this is not by accident. This That's is right. a, a, deliberate, uh, a deliberate effort on his part to separate the, um, I hate to use the word nature, but the essence of the two covenants. Yes. Um, the old legal covenant versus the new spiritual covenant to yeah. summarize very, very, very succinctly. Amen. Uh, and that's uh, it, it just um, it's just a, a new framework for practically living out your covenant, uh, contrasting 
what was what went before and was outlined in the previous chapters, 9, 10, and 11. Amen. Lord, we thank you that you gave us an opportunity to be a living sacrifice before us, before you. Transform me so that my thoughts, words, and deeds <coughs> reflect this loving relationship with the creator of the universe. Bring blessing to me, O oh Lord, so I can be a blessing to others. And we'd ask from all of these scriptures that have been delivered that you will save souls and fill folks with the Holy Ghost. In Christ's name, amen and amen. 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 Thank you, Lord, and uh, I'm just so blessed, Lord, for your word, Lord God. Help us to be and help me to be a living sacrifice to you, Lord God. Help me to be pleasing to you this day and to use all I have to honor and bring praise to you. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yes, thank you again, Lord. Thank you for your instruction. For all you've done for us, that uh, these, these uh, scripts uh, so clearly bring out from the top that we owe you everything uh, for you gave everything on your uh, for our behalf uh, it's only a fair exchange that we give you all that we have and live it out live our lives out for your service which you so uh, expensively bought and we appreciate uh, all you've done and look for your continued leading that we may live lives that glorify you in Yeshua's name. Amen. Amen and amen. Amen. Blessings. Blessings to y'all.